Hey folks, Chris, once again, we'll go back to the video. This is a request this time from Peter. And he wanted me to react to another video by Nuke Norway, which I'm all up for. This one is called Five Scary Horror Movies Based on True Stories. This is gonna be fun. <laughs> Let's check it out. Five horror movies based on true events. Nightmare on Elm Street. Yes. I heard about Nightmare this. on Elm Street film series, horribly burned murderer Freddy Krueger invades the dreams of his unsuspecting victims and kills them in their sleep, which then causes them to die in real life. Turns out the idea of someone's death being caused by a nightmare is not fictional. In fact, Nightmare on Elm Street was inspired by a very real news story. In 1981, 26 healthy men from the Asian country of Laos died in their sleep, Damn. usually screaming out just before death as if they were having a terrifying dream. Doctors and scientists couldn't understand what had caused the deaths or why the condition only affected Laotians. Physicians began to label the deaths as, quote, Nightmare Death Syndrome. Oh. While studying the strange yeah. Nightmare Death Syndrome, Professor Shelley Adler was told by one Laotian man, quote, when the oceans don't worship properly, then the spirits of their ancestors don't want to protect them. That's why the evil spirit is able to come and get them. Child's Play. Yes, Child's Play I series of movies is about a serial killer who uses... I bet it's Robert the Doll, which is based on Chucky. Patient voodoo to possess a child's toy, a doll named Chucky. It soon becomes apparent that Chucky is not your ordinary doll as he begins to terrorize the family. <laughs> well, the story of Chucky the Possessed Doll was inspired by the story of Robert the Doll. Robert the Doll was given to Robert Eugene Otto as a boy. One rumor said that the doll had been given to Otto by a Haitian maid who disliked the. And there's actually a horror. There's actually a horror series that is based on Robert. But that doll looks way more creepier. I mean. Those movies are low budget, but they look that doll is scary as shit, man. You should watch them. Family and curse the doll. As a boy, Otto could often be heard talking to the doll, always referring to Robert as if he were real. Visitors to the house claimed to hear small footsteps coming from the attic where Robert was kept, and the doll would often be found in a different room with no explanation mm. as to how it got there. Yeah. Otto kept the doll until his death. Robert the Doll now resides in the East Martello Museum in Key West, Florida. The museum receives hundreds of letters about the doll every year, but they don't come from fans. In fact, the letters are usually written apologies to Robert the Doll. The writers claim that after visiting the museum and either laughing at or making fun of Robert, they experienced horrible ba- I heard something. I saw something move. Never mind. <laughs> of luck, wow. Including accidents and bad health. They believe that they have been cursed by the spirit of Robert the Doll. Creepy. In this clip taken in the museum, many believe that Robert yeah. can be seen blinking on camera. I saw this. This was not noticed by the original poster of the video. It was actually later pointed out by observant YouTube commenters. Mm -mm. The hills have eyes. Ooh, that's a good Hills movie, Hills is about a group of cannibalistic mutants living in the Nevada desert. They murder and feed on any travelers unlucky enough to pass through their hillside home. While the actual origin of this story doesn't come from the hills of Nevada, it comes from the hills of faraway Scotland and the gruesome tale of Sawney Bean and his clan. Alexander Sawney Bean is said to have been the head of a clan of 50 people living in a cave in the Scottish hills during the 15th century. The clan lived a life isolated from the rest of society, inbreeding to the point that some members of the family had severe deformities. Mm. Sawney Bean and his clan are said to have murdered, mutilated, and even eaten over 1,000 people who traveled oh my near their God. home. That's fucked up. The clan was finally captured by a posse sent out by King James VI of Scotland. Allegedly, the entire clan were taken to Glasgow and Leith, where they were severely tortured and then executed for their crimes. 
Some believe the tales of Sawney Bean to simply be 15th century legend, but actual written accounts of the clan and their crimes do exist. Oh, that's fucked up. Psycho, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and Silence of the Lambs. All three of those movies are fucked up, man. Especially back in the day when there was all like disturbing as hell movies coming. These movies are fucked up. Now you may be wondering why I included all of these movies into one entry. Yeah, Well, why? that's because of the simple fact that all three of these movies were inspired by one gruesome true story. The life of deranged serial killer, Ed Gein. Hmm. Well, I didn't Ed Gein, also known as really, the Butcher of Plainsfield, was arrested on can't really hear what that guy said, but whatever. On November 16th, 1957, when police searched his house, they found an absolute horror show. Ed Gein's furniture was handmade from human bones and covered with human skin. Oh. There were skulls that Gein had hollowed out and was using as soup bowls. There were body parts stored in bags and boxes. Holy But perhaps fuck. the most bizarre of all, the authorities found female masks and costumes made of actual human skin. Oh my god. And presumably Ed Gein would wear these human skin suits when lounging around at home. When questioned, Gein said that he had started building his quote, woman suit after his mother's death because he wanted to become his mother. Ed Gein was deemed mentally unfit to stand trial and died in an insane asylum years later. But his grotesque legacy of real-life murders, grave robbings, and insanity went on to inspire the fictional characters of Norman Bates and Psycho, Leatherface and the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and Buffalo Bill in the Academy Award-winning movie The Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> it rubs the lotion off. God damn it, damn mouse is going all over the place, man. Sorry guys, I'm pausing the damn video. Sorry guys, damn... Damn mouse. Leatherface and the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Buffalo Bill in the Academy Award winning movie The Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> it rubs the lotion on its skin or else it gets the hose again. The Possession, that was a good the movie. That was a the scary as fuck movie. movie. The Possession might not be as popular as some of the other titles on this list. Yes. But the true story behind the movie might be one of the creepiest tales of all. That movie was good too. It was scary as shit, man. Ball. If you haven't seen it, I fucking recommend it highly. The Possession movie is about a young girl who gets an antique box that is haunted by an evil spirit. Turns out the ancient case is called a Dybbuk box, and is used to trap demons, keeping them locked inside. Well, the real-life story of the Dybbuk box came straight from the internet, or more specifically from the online auction site eBay. An antique collector named Kevin Manis offered a wine cabinet for sale. He claimed that the wine cabinet was purchased from the estate of a deceased 103-year-old Polish woman and carried a horrible curse of an evil spirit. He said he wanted to get rid of the Dybbuk box after many strange misfortunes had befallen him and his family, including his mother having a stroke after he had given her the cabinet as a gift. While the box was in his home, Kevin claimed to have violent nightmares from which he awoke with scratches and bruises, and later he even claimed to have seen, quote, strange, I move you gotta, strange uh, dark creatures I move, lurking around. Your movie ought to give you nightmares, too. Found his home. Now, as weird of a sales pitch as that might be for an eBay item, apparently someone did want the Dybbuk box. Kevin Manis sold the cabinet to a student named Iosef Nietzsche. However, Nietzsche put the box back up for sale on eBay only eight, eight months. Oh my god, this fucking mouse, man. Later. After he and his roommates began having bad luck and nightmares similar to the ones Kevin Manis had. The wow. Dybbuk box was then bought by Jason Haxton. 
Paxton claims that after owning the box, he began to break out in welts and hives, oh. and even occasionally coughed up blood for no reason. Paxton says that eventually he just decided to seal the Dybbuk box inside a metal container and bury it in an undisclosed location. He has never told anyone where he buried the Dybbuk box. Uh, I was just curious. Just... No, I don't want to play goddamn video. Sorry, I didn't need to think. Those are actually pretty creepy, I'm not gonna lie. Like I said, that Possession movie, if you guys haven't seen it, I recommend you check it out. That's a pretty cool movie. And, um, the Chucky one I saw coming. Because I love Chucky. And I kind of like Girl with the Doll. Those movies aren't that really great, but... Um, the doll is scary as hell, though, man. Yeah, so... That was a good list. I might... Yeah, I might stop uploading today just because my mouse is being a fucking nuisance, being a fucking asshole, and I have stuff to do. I have like a, I have to, I have to sign an application and shit like that. But tomorrow I'll get back to my or or my to my um. Um, normal routines, so yeah. I might or might not play anything today after this video, so if I don't come back, that's why. So, with that said, thank you so much for the request. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye bye. And I apologize for the technical difficulties. It's, just, it's damn mouse, man. This computer's getting old. No, it's not. Bye.